decided to change the program, observing the decidedly youthful audience here. This one I like to call it the elderly rapper. This is the first time I've done uh, it with this kind of arrangement, so it's kind of spontaneous. <clears throat> Go. I'm so tired of how the old folks are treated just because they're old doesn't mean they're not needed. The TV keeps it telling us the beauty is a youth, the whole life is beauty. Now that's the truth, you know, the only way to learn about your life is by living. They learn so much, why don't we take them what they give and she can take them. They got a life to live, they got a lot to give. <laughs> life to live, they got a lot to give. It isn't a joke, it's a not just hype to get beaten, mug robbed, killed the fill a crack pipe, they can't even afford a decent meals ain't close. They're living downtown with the junkies and the hoes. I think they deserve a little more respect than a fifty buck a week in a government check a chicken chicken. They got a lot to live, they got a lot to give. Lot to live, they got a lot to give. You talk about this and man, just listen to the story that you're hearing on the news at six. A song about an old dude living on dog food froze because he couldn't pay to get the heat fixed. Uh, they're a minority, they're a priority, their seniority is and what it ought to be. It's a quality, not a liability. Come on, people, can't you see we're killing off a history? Get you go, go, they got a life to live, they got a life to give. Life to live, they got a life to give. They lived their lives the best as they could. They could have done better, but they tried to do good. They lived through depression and the work for land. And come the Second World War, man, they took a stand. Uh, they know how to laugh and they know how to cry. They know how it feels when your best friend dies. They got a life to live. They got a lot to give. They got a life to live. They got a lot to give. Hey. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. You got room for one more piece? One of my favorite writers, uh, great Edgar Allan Poe. He's called Edgar Allan Poe. What? Poe is the first half of poetry, and the rest of it is try. It's almost as though Edgar Allan Poe is faulting across a century and a half and challenging every living writer to a duel. Hey kid, can you top this? It's a little thing I call the raven. Well, why don't you try? Prophet, said I, thing of evil. Prophet still, bird or devil, with a tempest sent or tempest toss thee here ashore, desolate, yet all undaunted, in this desert land enchanted, in this house by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quote the raven, nevermore. Poe looks up, half-lidded from his opium in his lambic, and pens octameter pen pains perfectly iambic, with syllables left over like, quote, the raven nevermore. Now this accident of nomenclature, Poe plus try equals poetry, doesn't diminish, say, New Englander Robert Frost's name, but as cool as Frost's name is, in the game of ironic tropes surrounding the names of dead poets, Poe plus try equals poetry is a awful damn hard to beat, words worth notwithstanding. Prophet, said I, thing of evil. Prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, and by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels named Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden the angels named Lenore, quote the raven, nevermore. Poe was always so succinct and yet somehow so fl florid. His torrid heart told tales of entombment, embalmment, bisection, and other cascades of death. But in a room like this, and on a night like tonight, he could charm us with Annabelle Lee, and then he could hypnotize us with the bells, the bells, the bells, and just pin everyone to the floor with the raven. Be that then our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked up starling. Get me back into the tempest in the night's Plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as token of the lie thy soul hath spoken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart. And take thy form from off my door, quote the raven, nevermore. 
I mean, who is going to beat this guy in a live poetry environment? Not the biker sage with the tales of the road in the face of an ancient troubadour. Not the youthful intellectual whose metaphoric constructs are as complex as Crick's double helixes. Not the African-American Harvard senior whose cornrows are as perfect as his or her poetry. Both of them a cascade of jet emanating from a chiseled caramel and brilliant head. Nobody is going to conspicuously eclipse Edgar Allan Poe in a live poetry environment, but from the grave and from the muddy street where he died, says Poe, try. Thanks, folks. My name's Chris Elliott.